Welcome to another episode of Practice Makes You Better. In this particular episode, I'm tackling safety and your vehicle, where I'm gonna be doing a 30 question mock test, breaking it down for you, giving you hints, tips, and tricks along the way to give you the best possible chance of passing your theory test first time. I'm using the app, my app of choice, which is Driving Test Success. So let's waste no more time, jump on the iPad and let's get started. First question, you're carrying two 13 year old children and their parents in your car. Who's responsible for seeing that the children wear seatbelts? I've not seen this question before. Look like this has been updated in the app. So that's one of the reasons why I suggest using apps because if it's get changed, gets updated, it's there instantly for you. So let me just read that again, because like I said, I've not seen this question before. I've seen about carrying a child, but not with the parents. So you're carrying two 13-year-old children and their parents in your car. Who's responsible for seeing that the children wear seatbelts? That's always going to be driver anyway. You're driving, you're responsible, regardless of whether the parents are in there or not. And just in case, another fairy test question, as I like to give you hints, tips, and tricks, um, you are responsible for anyone aged 14 and under to make sure they wear their seatbelts. And when I say you, I mean you, the driver. The children's parents know, the children know, the front seat passenger know, you, the driver, yes. You're stopped at the side of the road. What must you do if you'll be waiting there for some time? Technically turn off your engine, um, save the environment so you're not putting gas fumes coming out of the exhaust. So yeah, looking for something along the lines of switch off your engine. Use your headlights, no. Apply the steering lock, no. Switch off the radio, no. Switch off your engine, yeah. And plus you're saving fuel as well when you switch it off. On a vehicle, where would you find a catalytic converter? A catalytic converter is found on the exhaust system. All that does is just cleans up the bits and pieces that go through and then spits out the back into the environment. So a catalytic converter is found on the exhaust. Um, in the fuel tank, no. In the air filter, no. On the cooling system, no. On the exhaust system, yes. What part of a car does the law require you to keep in good condition? So the part that needs to be in good condition at all times is your seatbelt. Any other part of the car, one, it may not work, your car that is, and the other one will be picked up by the MLT when you get it done annually every year. But the seatbelt has to be done, every, sorry, it has to be in good conditions every time because you're driving the car every time, which means you should be wearing the seatbelt every time. So the seatbelt's first one out, but still read the others just in case there's more information in there. The door locks, no, the transmission, no, the gearbox, no. What's the legal minimum tread depth for tires on your trailer or caravan? Now, when they ask about a tire question, they can do, on this case, this trailer or caravan, they can ask for a motorcycle, bus, um, lorry, car, it makes no difference. A tire is a tire and you're looking for 1.6 millimeter tread depth. The full answer is 1.6 millimeter tread depth no cuts, bulges, rips or tears on the tire wall, which is also a driving test question. So 2.6 no, one millimeter no, two millimeters no, 1.6 yes. How can you plan your route before starting a long journey? The way to do that is to Google it. Use, I would use Waze, that's what I use, but Google Maps, and think planned it out so you know what the traffic's like and obviously leaving good time so you're not rushing. Um, check your vehicle handbook, no. Consult her travel agent, no. Use a route planner on the internet, i.e. Google Maps. Ask your local garage, no. How would underinflated tires affect your vehicle? Underinflated means flat. So if your tires are flat, there's two possible answers they can give you. One, your car works harder because if it's flat, it means the car's got to do more work to keep it moving. And the other answer they could give you is stopping distance will increase because obviously if your tires are flat, it's going to take you a little bit longer for your car to stop. So we're looking for one of those two answers. So the vehicle stopping distance would increase. That's a possible. The flash rate of the vehicle's indicators would increase. No. The vehicle's headlights would aim high. No. It'd actually be lower because the tires are flat. The vehicle's gear change mechanism would become stiff. And again, no. What's the most important reason for having a properly 
adjusted head restraint. Right, a lot of people think the head restraint, which what you obviously behind your head on the car, um, thinks it's for comfort. It's not. It's stopping you from getting whiplash. If someone hits you from behind, your head automatically goes back and the headrest is stopping you from getting neck injuries, whiplash, that type of thing. So it's for protection. Um, to help maintain your driving position, no. To make you more comfortable, that's the common answer in the classroom, no. To help you relax, no. To help you avoid neck injury, yes. How can you reduce the damage your vehicle causes to the environment? So brake heavily, no. Use busy routes, no. Anticipate well ahead, yes. Anticipate well ahead just means you're planning ahead so you've got smooth acceleration, smooth braking, so you never have to brake heavy, brake sharply, or accelerate heavily or fast away from a starting position. And use narrow side streets, no. What should you do if your anti-lock brakes, which is known as ABS, anti-lock brake system, Warning light stays on. If it stays on, get your car checked out as soon as it's possible. Have the brakes checked immediately. There you go. Um, read the others just in case. Check the brake fluid level, no. Check the parking brake is released, no. Check for foot brake free play, again, no. If your light stays on or any of your light stays on, you need to go and get that checked straight away. <clears throat> it's becoming a recurring theme through the series. If you understand the question, understand the answer, it doesn't make a difference how they word it, you are still going to pass. And that's why I always suggest do the 14 categories. That's why I'm helping you out with this one, Practice Makes You Better series. And I've also got a study with me series, which is done from the desktop app. So let me just read the question again. What's the legal minimum depth of tread for car tires? If you remember, tires are tired, I said earlier on, it's 1.6. All we need to do is look for 1.6. We don't need to look for anything else. What's the purpose of road hump chicanes and narrow rings? Road hump chicanes and narrow rings are another word of um, traffic calming measures and they're designed to reduce your speed to keep you slower. To reduce traffic speed first for now. To increase traffic speed, no. To allow pedestrians to cross, no. To separate lanes of traffic, no. When should you check the engine oil level? Now there's two possible answers that I can give you on this one. When the engine is cold or the car is cold or before a long journey. So it's gonna be one of those two. Again, if you understand the question, it doesn't make a difference how they word it, you're gonna understand what they're looking for in terms of answers. So when the engine is hot, no. Before a long journey, that's a possible. Every time you drive the car, no. If you're checking it every time you drive the car, um, you're probably looking out for an issue with your car. And early in the morning, again, no. Why is it a good idea to plan your journey to avoid busy times? Your journey will be longer, no. You'll have a more stressful journey. No, you'll have an easier journey. The question is, says, why is it a good idea? It's a good idea to check because you're gonna have an easier journey if you've planned it, you know where you're going, you know where probably hazards are, the traffic is, and all the rest of it, because you've planned. It will cause more traffic congestion again, no. You're having difficulty finding a parking space in a busy town. Can you park on the zigzag lines of a zebra crossing? And the answer is no. It doesn't make a difference how busy you are struggling to find a parking spot. You should never park on a zigzag and you should never overtake within a zigzag. That's the two rules, two rules for the zigzags. So yes, in order to drop off passengers, no. Wrong answer. No, not unless you stay with your car again. No, wrong answer. Yes, if you don't block people from crossing. Again, no, wrong answer. No, not under any circumstances, which is yes, correct answer. What's the purpose of a catalytic converter? If you remember from the previous question, um, catalytic converter is on the exhaust system. It cleans up the gases before it emits it out into the environment. To reduce fuel consumption, no. To reduce the risk of fire, no. To reduce engine wear, no. To reduce harmful exhaust gases, yes. How can drivers help the environment? By using leaded fuel. Leaded fuel doesn't exist anymore. By accelerating harshly, again, you're accelerating harshly, which means you're going to burn more fuel. By accelerating gently, yes, because you're not burning fuel, a lot of fuel. By driving faster, no. 
How can you help to prevent your car radio being stolen? Park near a busy junction? No. Leave the radio turned on? No. Install a security coded radio. Yeah, if it's security coded, it means it can't be used in another vehicle. So that's the answer you're looking for. Park in an unlit area? No. You're parked on the road at night. When must you use parking lights? Now you're gonna use your parking lights when you're parked on a road when the speed limit's fast and 30 miles an hour. In other words, 40, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. Because it's a faster road, people would need to know that you're parked and not driving. Parking lights are like little lights at the side of a car that make it, make it clear that you are parked. So we're looking for an answer when the road or the speed limit is more than 30 miles an hour. Um, when you're facing oncoming traffic, no. When there are continuous white lines in the middle of the road, no. When you're near a bus stop, no. When the speed limit exceeds 30 miles an hour, in other words, faster than 30 miles an hour, yes. You service your own vehicle. How should you dispose of the old engine oil? Let's just take it to the local dump, really. Um, council dump, that is. And they'll dispose of it for you properly. Um, tip it into a hole in the ground, no. Pour it down the drain, no. Put it in a dustbin, no. Take it to a local authority site, yes. Where would parking your vehicle cause an obstruction? Okay. In a marked parking space, no. In front of a property entrance, yeah, because if people want to get in or out of their driveway, you're blocking it. So it's going to be there. But again, read the others just in case. On your driveway, that's not causing instruction because you're on the driveway alongside a parking meter. Again, as long as you pay for it, it's not going to be a problem. Right, so the question is, is what can you achieve if you drive smoothly? If you're driving smoothly, you're going to reduce for your fuel consumption and it's 15%. Increase your journey times about 50%, again, no. So we, by driving smoothly, you're gonna reduce the fuel, the amount of fuel that you use, and they have worked out to be about 15% on average. When is fuel consumption at its highest? Fuel consumption at its highest when you're normally um, braking, uh, accelerating heavily or braking heavily because that was the thing that you should not be doing because if you brake heavily, you need the power to move off again. And if you accelerate heavily, you're burning a lot of fuel for that to happen. So we're looking for some one of those two answers. When you're accelerating, that's a possible, but it says when is the fuel consumption at its highest? When you accelerate, it's not necessarily at its highest, but I'm marking that for now. When you're turning sharply, you shouldn't be turning sharply, but no. When you're coasting, no. When you're braking, Again, no. So it's going to be when you're accelerating because you're actually burning fuel. You need to top up your battery with distilled water. What level should you fill it to? It's just above the cell plates. If the cell plates are here, you just want to fill it just above it. Um, halfway at the battery, the top, no. The top of the battery, no. Just above the cell plate, yes. Just below the cell plate, no. When are you not allowed to sound your vehicle's horn? Um, the horn should not be used between 11, in the built-up era, between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning. So not between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m. in the morning. At any time in the built-up era, no. Between 11.30 p.m. and 6 a.m., no. Between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m., no. Between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m., yes. What will reduce fuel consumption? Um, staying, in, staying in lower gears. No, because lower gears is power, so you're burning fuel. It says what's going to reduce it. Driving more slowly, it's going to be that one probably. Um, and the, when they say drive more slowly, they mean drive slow, uh, slowly in the gear that you're in. So if you're in third gear, make sure you're doing the right speed for third gear, not doing a fourth gear speed. That's what they mean by driving more slowly. Accelerate rapidly, no, because you're accelerating rapidly. Late and heavy braking, again, no, it's going to burn more fuel. How will your journey be affected by traveling outside the busy times of the day? Your journey will be more hazardous, no, because it's outside of the busy times of the day. Your journey will take longer, again, no, it's outside. Your journey will use more fuel, again, no, because it's outside. Your journey will have fewer delays, yes, because it's less busy. 
what's most likely to waste fuel? So what's most likely to waste it? Underinflated tires, yes, because that's there was similar to the question we had earlier on. Because they're flat, the car has to work hard. If it has to work hard, it's burning more fuel. Driving a mild to weight, which is a common answer in the classroom that when I teach, but um, the way that I explain it, driving a mild weight is not wasting fuel. If you have to get to A to B and it has to be via a motorway, you're not wasting fuel, that's necessary. But underinflated tires is a waste. Using different um, brands of fuel, no. Reducing your speed, no. Why have red routes been introduced into major cities? Red routes and yellow routes are the same type of thing. It eases congestion and helps traffic flow. That's all it's about. So it helps traffic flow or eases congestion. Um, to raise the speed limits, no. To help the traffic flow, yes. To provide better parking, no. To allow lorries to load more freely, no. What can you expect if you drive using rapid acceleration and heavy braking? What can you expect? Well, if you're gonna brake heavily and accelerate heavily, more um, burn more fuel. That's the only thing you can expect. You're wasting fuel, to be honest. So increased fuel consumption, yes. Reduced exhaust emissions, no. Reduced pollution, no. Increased road safety, no. So there you have it, another episode completed, safety and your vehicle. Again, very simple subject to be fair, as long as you apply the safety factor, give it some thought before you dive in and give an answer. If you haven't already, come and join us in our community on Discord, where if you're struggling with your theory, you can get help from like-minded students, get help from me, post your screenshots of the questions you are struggling with. Hopefully you got some value from this video. If you did, like, definitely comment below and subscribe. Share it with your friends so they have the best possible chance of passing their theory test first time. YouTube's gonna show you a video here. I'm gonna show you a video here. Go off and watch which one's relevant to you. And I shall catch you in the next video.